This video is sponsored by War Thunder. So I played Mass Effect 3 with no imported save file, and the results were far worse than I could have ever imagined. What's up everyone, Big Dan here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you what happens when you start a fresh Mass Effect 3 playthrough with no save import. We're going to walk through what happens in the story, which characters die, and my god, this is truly a cursed timeline. We're in for a wild ride, folks, so buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and let's play Mass Effect 3 in the worst way possible. When you start a new game and don't import your save, you will be prompted to go through the Genesis comic. This will allow you to make major decisions from the previous games to bring your new world state up to speed. But doing the comic would kind of defeat the purpose of this video. I want to see what Bioware cooked up as the default scenario for players who don't do the Genesis comic, so we're skipping that shit. Now it's worth pointing out that default is not the same as canon. The devs have to create some kind of starting point for players who are coming into the game without playing Mass Effect 1 and 2. But this does not mean that they see these scenarios as set in stone that we should all accept as canonical truth. That being said, holy shit did Bioware create an absolute cursed timeline for the default in Mass Effect 3. Many of the worst outcomes from the first two games are represented in this default save state. Starting off on Earth, the first thing I noticed is that the Arrival DLC is not completed. In this case, Anderson hits us with more generic dialogue about why Shepard was grounded. That why they grounded me? Took away my ship? You know that's not true. The shit you've done? Any other soldier would have been tried, court-martialed, and discharged. That why they grounded me? took away my ship? You know that's not true. When you blew up the Batarian Relay, hundreds of thousands of Batarians died. It was that or let the Reapers walk through our back door. I know that, Shepard. And so does the committee. If it wasn't for that, you'd have been court-martialed and left to rot in the brig. Oh, hey, Ashley. Glad to see you made it off Vermeer. I definitely would have saved you if I made the choice myself. One other funny thing about doing a no-save import run is that you don't get that XP boost at the beginning of the game. So when I was fighting alongside Anderson at the end of Vancouver, I couldn't even level him up or unlock his abilities because I had no XP. Mars plays out basically the same, except that Lair of the Shadow Broker wasn't completed. So Liara's friend, Farron, died. How'd you take out the old Shadow Broker? It cost me. I had to hire dozens of mercenaries just to storm his lair. You really wanted him dead, huh? The broker captured a friend. I swore I'd get him back. And? I was too late to save him. The elusive man also never mentions the collector base. And this is one of the things I've noticed throughout my playthrough. A lot of the dialogue is either generic, so as not to touch on events from past games, or overly explanatory since new players will lack context. Another example is during the Asari Monastery mission. Liara gives a long-winded explainer about the Ardot Yakshi, since the player would have never encountered one at this point. Arriving on the Citadel, we discover that the OG Council died in Mass Effect 1. This will potentially bite us in the ass later. I decided to do Kasumi's side quest, only to discover that Kasumi was either dead or not recruited. In this case, we only work with John Dumbau to seek out an indoctrinated Hanar diplomat, and at the end of the quest, we're forced to choose between saving Bao or the Hanar homeworld, which is the worst ending to this quest, by the way. Also, Thane is dead. What the f- I'm honestly surprised how many squad mates won't be making a return appearance in this game. Apparently, Dr. Chakwas was the sole survivor of the Normandy crew. We cannot recruit Daniels or Donnelly. And Kelly Chambers is dead too. Liar's father never appears on the Citadel either. This just keeps getting better. Side note, also Dr. Michelle has no idea who we are when we speak to her for the first time. It's also worth mentioning that Shiala and the Pharos colony perished, so mostly renegade options are included in the default. But not just any renegade options, like the worst possible ones. Palavin proceeds like normal. Thank God Garrus is still alive. I don't know what I would have done if they offed my homeboy, but my relief was short-lived when I decided to make a trip to Grissom Academy. Looking for a change of pace from the Mako and Hammerhead? Then you gotta check out today's sponsor, War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. And the best part is that it's completely free to play on PC and console. With over 2,500 different vessels to choose from, you'll be wreaking havoc in no time. We're talking tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from 10 major nations, ranging from 1920s biplanes and armored cars, 
to modern day fighter jets and battle tanks. Join a global community of over 70 million players in epic PvP battles today and delve into the breathtaking experience that is War Thunder. This is the perfect game for military history buffs, and its wealth of game modes provides a ton of variety for you to explore. War Thunder also features extensive customization options with a variety of camouflage and paint jobs to create your ideal vehicle. Click on my link in the description to download War Thunder and play for free today on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. New and returning players that haven't played in six months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms that includes multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lions, and seven days of premium account. Upon arriving at the station, I quickly realized that Jack was dead. Dude, this is brutal. She gets replaced by Jason Prangley, aka Ginger Jack, but that dude gets absolutely bodied as we are escaping the station. David Archer is also nowhere to be seen since the Overlord DLC was not complete. We can basically assume at this point that the default world state neglects all the DLC for Mass Effect 1 and 2. Upon meeting up with the Krogans and Salarians, my worst fears were confirmed yet again. Rex is dead, replaced by his brother Erdnot Reeve. Although I did get to enjoy some hilarious dialogue as Garrus and Edie absolutely roast Reeve. Seems the Reapers are taking it slow with us. Playing it safe. They know the minute we enter this war, their days are numbered. I suppose an arrogant Krogan is what we need to win this. Or perhaps they don't see your species as significant enough. I don't like her. Kirihi is also dead, replaced by Lieutenant Tolan, and this guy is an absolute jagoff. He hates the Krogan and Commander Shepard, and so unlike Kirihi, he won't give us a badass handgun. The only consolation prize of Sir Kesh is that Morden is still alive. He makes no mention of Malin's data though, and we will come to learn that it's treated as if Morden's loyalty mission was never completed, so the data did not get recovered. This will have implications. But after bringing Eve and Morden back to the Normandy, I took a job from Reeve to rescue Arlac Company. And turns out, Grunt is also dead. His replacement is a character named Erdnot Dag, a generic Krogan who always gets killed during this mission. His last words are so fitting, too. Time to die. Making our way into the Rachni Nest, we discover that the original Rachni Queen was also killed in Mass Effect 1, so I decided to leave the Breeder Queen for dead. Arriving on Tachanka, I had an idea. Since Rex was already dead, and since I knew Eve would die without Malin's data, I decided I wanted to save Morden. If Rex and Eve are both dead, you can convince Morden to sabotage the cure with a speech check, and ah fuck, my reputation is too low. I knew I should have done more side quests. Alright, I guess we'll cure the genophage. See you on the other side, Morden. Genophage cured. Krogan free. New beginning. For all of us. We get some different dialogue with Liara after the mission too. Usually when Shepard wakes up from the nightmare after dealing with the genophage, you have the option to say you were thinking about either Ashley or Caden, depending on which one died on Vermeer in Mass Effect 1. Are you thinking about anyone in particular? Caden, back on Vermeer. He died buying us time to defeat Sovereign. Seeing what we're up against now might think his sacrifice was in vain. But in this case, the dialogue is completely generic. Are you thinking about anyone in particular? There's a lot of people back on Earth dying while we gather our strength. They're wondering if we're ever coming back. Friends, family, parents and children. This isn't their fight, but they're buying us time with their lives. Oh yeah, just thinking about some random people who died in the past. Returning to the Citadel, we find ourselves knee-deep in the Cerberus coup attempt. And at this point, I was sweating bullets. Since Thane and Kirihi were both dead, Kai Lang killed the Salarian Counselor. Given my experience with Morden on Tachanka, I wasn't sure whether Ashley would believe Udina was behind the coup, especially considering he could pin the Salarian Counselor's death on me with fake AI-generated footage. Observe. Here is Counselor Eshiel being shot in CSEC headquarters. Here is Commander Shepard pulling the trigger. You're gonna pay for that. What more do you need? Man, I knew that AI art was no good. Stand down. You don't want to be shot by your own Marine. Ash, 
You know the stakes. You've got to trust me. I'm a lot of things, but an underhanded assassin isn't one of them. Where does that put you? Udina, step back from the console. To hell with this! Thankfully, I was nice to Ash on Mars and visited her in the hospital earlier, so I had just enough Riz to tip the scales in our favor. I still had to convince her to join our crew afterwards, but this was the first good outcome of my entire playthrough so far. I decided to mop up some more side quests before linking up with the Corians, and I was greeted with more cursed outcomes. Zaid is gone, so I couldn't get both war assets during the Din Korlak mission. Conrad Werner is gone too, so we get the boring version of the Metagel Station side quest. I did have some interesting interactions with Bollock and the Batarian terrorists though, where I learned how this timeline dealt with the Alpha Relay explosion. Since the Arrival DLC was incomplete, canonically the Alliance carried out the operation with a strike team sent by Hackett. The team was decimated in the process, which is actually represented in a lower Alliance War Assets score, but they did manage to destroy the Relay, killing 300,000 Batarians in the process. Departing from the Citadel, I decided to pursue Jacob and Samara's side missions. And surprise, surprise, Samara is dead too. Jesus Christ, this is getting better and better. But you know who did manage to survive? Jacob Taylor. Out of all the squad mates from Mass Effect 2, Bioware kept this mofo alive. But not Thane, Grunt, Jack, or Samara. Okay, I see how it is. We also meet Gavin Archer for the first time, where he informs us that his brother David died during Project Overlord. But since the Overlord DLC is considered incomplete, we cannot gain Gavin Archer as a war asset. He doesn't even blow his brains out either. So again, I think this is the worst outcome. David is dead and we have nothing to show for it. At this point, I was afraid of what I would discover in the Geth Corian plotline. Would Tally and Legion also be dead? Time to rip off the band-aid because I just couldn't put it off any longer. Admiral Ron introduces herself to us for the first time, which means that Tally's loyalty mission is considered incomplete. Thankfully, Tally is still alive though. However, she is exiled by the Corians, which means we have absolutely no shot at securing peace. Legion is dead too, replaced by a VI reconstruction. So with this in mind, I decided to side with the Corians at the end of Rannoch. I'm sorry. We were correct to distrust organics. Uploading the code. I knew that thing would turn on us. Thessio was pretty much the same as usual, but we get another twist of fate on Horizon. I forgot to mention it earlier, but Miranda is still alive. So I focused on doing everything I needed to do to keep her alive. I did all three meetings with her on the Citadel, warned her about Kai Lang, and gave her access to Alliance resources. So she should survive on Horizon, right? Right? I just wish I could have. Miranda? Miranda? What the f***, dude? I guess she was doomed from the start? Can this playthrough get any worse? I decided to skip the Citadel DLC because a lot of my favorite characters were already dead. In this timeline, the only characters you can get at the party are Liara, Joker, Edie, Cortez, Trainer, Tally, Garrus, Javik, and Ashley. Not the worst party ever, but consider all the squad mates that are missing. No Jack, Rex, Grunt, Zaid, Kasumi, Miranda, and no funeral for Thane. I just can't bring myself to do it, dude. Romance options are also incredibly limited in this timeline. If you're a male shepherd, you can only romance Ashley, Liara, or Steve Cortez. Steve! If you're femme shep, you only get two choices, Liara or Trainer. Oh, and you can have a fling with Diana Allers. I decided to move forward with the Ashley romance since I've never started a fresh relationship with her in Mass Effect 3. 
Chronos Station was basically the same, although we do get confirmation that Shepard destroyed the Collector Base in Mass Effect 2. This is the human proto-reaper Shepard destroyed. What's left of it? I'm surprised Cerberus recovered that much from the base. And we finally took out the rat tail samurai. That was for Miranda, you son of a bitch. We entered the final mission with a pitiful amount of war assets. I definitely could have farmed more if I did planet scanning and all the other side quests, but there's no way I could unlock the ending where Shepard survives. Hilariously, when Shepard gets the chance to call all his squad mates for a final chat, the only people we can call are Cortez and Jacob. At this point, the run was already so cursed, so I figure, why not go all the way with it? So I brought Liara and Tally as my squad mates during the dash to the beam. After dealing with the Elusive Man and confronting the Star Child, our only available choice is to destroy the Reapers. But since our war asset score was too low, we end up destroying Earth's atmosphere in the process, and the Normandy gets deleted when the mass relays pop off. So yeah, this timeline was almost as bad as my worst playthrough series where I deliberately set up all the worst outcomes I could think of. Playing Mass Effect 3 with no save import takes a lot of the bad choices and outcomes from the first two games and makes them default, which is baffling to me. So yeah, let's just quickly recap some of the squad mates who died before this playthrough even began. Uh, so Ashley comes back, but Caden is dead, so we don't have him. Liara's got plot armor, so she would have been back regardless. We got Garrus, so that's good. Rex is dead. Tally does come back. Uh, Jacob, unfortunately, comes back. Uh, Miranda comes back, but then she ends up dying by default in Mass Effect 3. Grunt dies. Jack is dead. Morden comes back, but then, you know, he dies curing the genophage. Thane is dead. Uh, Samara's dead. Kasumi's dead. Zaid's dead. <laughs> And Legion's dead. And then, of course, these characters will always come back in Mass Effect 3 because they can't die in the first two games, obviously. So, really, the only characters we get in Mass Effect 3 are Ashley, Liara, Garrus, Tally, Jacob, kind of Morden, and then the, the three characters who can't die in the first two games anyway. So, like, almost everybody who can die in Mass Effect 1 and 2 ends up dead uh, coming into this playthrough, or they end up dying in Mass Effect 3. So yeah, this is one of the worst timelines possible for Mass Effect 3. So there you have it. This is what happens when you play Mass Effect 3 with no save import. I definitely cannot recommend this. <laughs> and don't forget to click on my link in the description to download War Thunder and play for free today on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. New and returning players that haven't played in six months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms, including multiple premium vehicles and other goodies. Thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Mass Effect and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.